Inventory management in the Elder Scrolls Online can sometimes feel like a mini game inside the actual game, trying to juggle the management of all of the items on your account. And without the great benefits of ESO Plus giving you double bank space as well as the craft bag, this can be extremely hard for players just trying out the game or who cannot afford ESO Plus. So how, without this, are we supposed to manage our inventory with all of the items that we need for crafting, deconstruction, the gearing process, etc.? Well, today we are going to go over just that. What's going on, guys? My name is Dots. From dotsgaming.com and today i'll be showing you guys how to manage your inventory in the elder scrolls online without eso plus Now, while inventory management without ESO Plus can seem like an extremely daunting task, it all basically boils down to saving up the right items on your account. Not only keeping the correct items in your bank, you know, that will allow you to do the most things, but also give you a bang for your buck in terms of saving inventory space, but also only saving gear and other items that you absolutely need. So making sure that you handle this the right way is the key to managing your inventory on your account without ESO Plus. Now, I'm going to start by covering the crafting items because I feel like that's probably why many people are here. I know the crafting items in ESO Plus can stack up very, very quickly, which is why the crafting bag is very tantalizing from ESO Plus, but I'm also going to cover afterwards what you want to keep in your bags, um, on your character itself and then you know specifically any gear that you want to keep in your bank we're going to cover all of that but starting with the crafting professions we are going to go one by one now starting with blacksmithing you want to save just in my opinion your max level material which is uh rubidite so the uh, rubidite ignits as well as rubidite ore unless you plan on creating any alternative characters you really don't need any of those low level materials the best way to level up blacksmithing clothing and enchant uh and woodworking is by simply deconstructing items anyway so those low level crafting materials unless you plan on playing a low level character do not do anything for you so if you start deconstructing gear throughout your leveling process which you absolutely should be to level up your professions any of the other materials that you get like void stones iron whatever you guys can go ahead and sell those items but besides your rubidite i would also recommend saving up the upgrade materials that you do acquire so that is going to be honing stones dwarven oil grain solvent and if you ever get any tempering alloy you're going to want to save those up similar thing for clothing you're going to want to save your ancestor silk that is the max level crafting material for clothing again under the exact same logic as blacksmithing and again you're also going to want to save those upgrade materials so that's hemming embroidery elegant lying and draw wax now for woodworking again same principle you're going to want to save up the rough ruby ash as well as ruby ash any refined material and in terms of your upgrade materials you also want to save those as well so we are talking about pitch we are talking about turpin mastic and rosin now those are the three the big three crafting professions so that's already going to save you a ton of bank space by you know getting rid of all of those lower level materials that you pretty much don't need now for jewelry crafting you're going to want to save up if you do have access to jewelry crafting in my opinion it's it's a very similar process you want to save up the platinum ounces again that's your maximum level crafting material so that is what you want to save you could also save the platinum dust since you if you refine 10 dusts you end up getting ounces afterwards so you're going to want to save those as well and then again same thing the upgrade materials with the 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 t uh, turn platings i think uh iridium platings zircon plating and then um the maximum level name is escaping me but you're also going to want to save those as well and then also the grains that go along with it since combining the 10 grains will give you a plating and the plating is going to run pretty expensive especially as we get towards purple so making sure you save those grains to get the platings is extremely important and it doesn't take up too much space in your inventory now alchemy is where things begin to go a little crazy because there's a lot of alchemy reagents in the game as well as a lot of different solvents now, you're going to want to save, in my opinion, you're going to want to save all of all level poison solvents, okay? You're going to want to save all of the poison solvents that you come across, okay? And I'll explain why in a second. But in terms of the waters, okay, in terms of the waters, you only want to save Lorcan's Tears, which is the maximum level potion, 
solvent. Okay, so for those of you who do not know, you have a solvent, which is basically kind of like the liquid for your potion or poison. And then you have the various reagents, which actually turn that solvent into your potion or poison. And it tells you whether or not on the item if the solvent makes a potion or a poison. Now, for Lorcan's Tears, that's the max level potion solvent. So that's the one you want to save for potions. But for poisons, the reason you want to save every single poison solvent that you get is because creating poisons, okay, and from starting from like level one until level 50 for your for your alchemy is the quickest way to level up alchemy. It's the quickest way to level up alchemy. If you want kind of like a more specific look into this, you can feel free to check out my ESO complete crafting guide, which you can find on my YouTube channel. Now, in terms of specific reagents, though, because we have the solvents covered, which, you know, which reagents should I save? You're going to want to save the most, you know, the, the reagents for the most common potion. So if you're looking to make money or, you know, based off of your class and what you're playing, you're going to want to, to specifically have certain reagents. So I'm going to cover the most common potions. Uh, today so you know which ones you want to save so for weapon power potions which give you major brutality major savagery as well as restore your stamina it's your most common stamina dps potion you're going to want blessed thistle dragon thorn and then either violet caprinus or water hyacinth you're going oh, excuse me uh water hyacinth or wormwood wormwood i'm reading incorrectly on my chart so either Water Hyacinth or Wormwood, and that's going to create your weapon power potions. In terms of your spell power potions, it's kind of the same thing. You want to save Cornflower, Lady Smock, and Namira's Rot, and this will give you your major sorcery potion, restore magicka, and spell critical potion, and this is your most common end game DPS for uh, magicka, that potion for you. Now, we also have our uh, major savagery potions. These are a really common PVP potion, uh, especially if you play stamina. And you're going to want to use Dragonthorn, Water Hyacinth, and then either Columbine or Mountain Flower. That will give you your major savagery crit bonus, restore your stamina, as well as restore some health. And then finally, we also have the, the Big Daddy Tri-Stat Potion. This is good in a wide variety of situations, PvP, tanking, lots of different things. You're going to want to save Bug Loss, Columbine, and Dragonthorn. And those are your most common potion reagents you're going to want to save. Also, for that leveling process, like I mentioned, in addition to all of the different poison solvents, you're going to also want to save Spider Eggs and Flesh Fly Larva. And the reason I say those two specifically is because they're very cheap to acquire and that you can uh, get them in droves you can get so many of them so if you combine those two and scale up the poison solvents like i detail in my eso complete crafting guide you will be able to level up your alchemy from 1 to 50 in like 15 or 20 minutes it's really nice every other po uh, potion or poison reagent that you have feel free to sell on a guild trader um or you know look up specific po potions you might need besides the one i detailed here today and Obviously, just save those specific reagents. You got to be picky about which potion reagents you save since, again, we do not have the craft bag. So only save the ones you absolutely need and sell the rest. Now we also have enchanting. Now for enchanting, you're going to only want to save two of the stones that dictate your uh, your quality, and that is going to be Kuda and Rekuda. You don't really care about normal, fine, or superior glyphs. You're only going to want to be using epic or legendary glyphs, in my opinion. The other ones are not worth the time. So only save Rekuda and Kuda. And in terms of the specific enchants, honestly, I would really only focus on your gear enchants. You can you can buy specific weapon or jewelry enchants on guild traders for a relatively cheap amount. Like, I'm only talking a couple hundred gold, especially if you only go for purple quality. But if you want to be able to make the common magica as well as stamina glyphs for yourself, you're going to want to save Rapora. And then for your magica glyphs, you're going to want to use Mako. And then for your stamina glyphs, you're going to want to use Denny. So that is how we're going to optimize our enchanting reagent. So we only need total. We need like four or five stones for most of the enchanting we're going to want to do in the game. Now, finally, for provisioning, provisioning is going to be a little different. You know, you're going to need to use specific uh, ingredients as you level up your provisioning. Again, check out my ESO Complete Crafting Guide to learn how to level up your provisioning from 1 to 50. But let's say you're at max level provisioning and you're like, Dots, I don't know which ingredients specifically to save. I, which one should I do? And again, you're going to want to save the ones for the most commonly used foods, okay? And that is going to be Dubious Kamoran Throne, 
uh, Witch Mother's Potent Brew, as well as Longfin Pasty with Melon Sauce. Those are your three most basic buff foods slash drinks in the game. And in my opinion, those are the ones you're going to want to save your ingredients for if you do choose to go into professioning. So for Dubious, you're going to want white meat, beetle scuttle, insect parts, and guts. For your Witch Mother's Potent Brew, you're going to want Nightshade, uh, Bervez Juice, Rice, and Small Game. And then finally, for Longfin Pasty with Melon Sauce, you want Fish, Melon, Greens, and Frost Miriam. Again, you can you don't have to keep these ingredients on your account. This is only if you actually want to create these foods from provisioning. I personally just buy the foods because they're very cheap, but ultimately, that is up to you. Now, style materials is where we're going to get a little bit different. In my opinion, you only want to save your base style material on your account. So, you know, let's say you play a Wood Elf, just save your Wood Elf style material and sell everything else. The reason I recommend doing that is because, again, we are strapped for inventory space. We need to save in the imp only the most important things in our inventory and there's no point in my opinion on an account that doesn't have ESO plus in saving these style materials if the outfits since the outfit station is a thing if you want your uh, your armor to look different you can simply go to an outfit station and change the appearance of your armor there's no need to craft it in a specific way where all of these style materials are now just going to take up space in your account don't get me wrong if there's one specific style that you really really love go ahead and save up all of those so you could craft it in that but in my opinion i don't think it's worth the space or again, really strapped your space, trying to be optimal. So only save the one for your race, just so that you can specifically craft items. And then finally, we have our trait materials, our trait items, the actual things that give our armor and gear the specific traits. Only save the ones that you need, okay? So if you, let's say you find out that you're playing a Magicka character, only save the ones that you need. So, you know, Divines, uh, Infused, if you're playing in PvP and you block a lot, you could save for uh, Sturdy. You also have Impenetrable for PvP. You also have, uh, you know, for your weapons that are Nern Honed and Sharpened and Infused. I would basically say, look at your builds and what you plan on doing eventually and save those specific trait items for your crafting. So, you know, kind of as you're, you're leveling up, I'm sure if you're watching this, you've probably looked into a build before. So see what's the most commonly used traits from the builds. Again, you, you're looking at mostly divines, impenetrable for your gear. And then you have for weapons, you have stuff like Nern Honed, Infused, and Sharpened. And then for jewelry, you have, um, obviously you have robust, healthy, uh, arcane, and then you also have infused off of jewelry, which is very good, and bloodthirsty. So I would save all of the trait materials for those. Those are the most common ones. Obviously, again, uh, training is another good one to save for while you're leveling up, of course. And if you ever want to create gear for you to grind and whatnot. But everything else you could pretty much choose to get rid of if you, if you so desire. But again, it's going to vary a little bit based off of your role. That was mostly for DPS. But again, see what your class and what your role provide, uh, requires and go based off of that. Now, finally, that covered all of our crafting stuff. We have our actual bank. What are we going to keep inside of our bank? You're only going to want to keep gear that you plan on using on a character or that you think will be worth keeping. So, obviously, if you get a Burning Spell Weave Inferno staff, you're going to want to save that in your bank. But the gear in your bank at end game should primarily be gear that you need and use you're not going to be able to do what i do and hoard every piece of gear that you've ever acquired ever you know because i have so much storage space because i do a lot of theory crafting but save gear that you know you you get and is really rare and that is worth keeping or that you might use in a build or have used in a build before and may use again one day um that's going to again very much vary based off of your um your character and what you're playing but only save end game gear that you absolutely absolutely need to do be sure to lock it so that you don't accidentally delete it or deconstruct it now during the leveling process on the other hand you want to save gear that you need for research researching is extremely important so that you can learn those traits for crafting as well as the transmutation process so be sure that you are saving gear for deconstruction in your bank you can deconstruct straight from the bank as well as research straight from the bank um excuse me make sure you save gear in your bank for the research process because you can research straight from the bank so make sure you are saving that stuff for your research process now Besides the gear that we have in our bank and all of the crafting materials that we just discussed, what should I be carrying in my bag? Let's say we get to CP160, we're good to go, we have all of our gear, what should I be keeping inside of my bag? 
obviously you're going to want to keep and use any gear in your bag that you use on a regular basis. So for me, I have my PVE gear currently equipped and I have my PVP gear currently in my bag. I also have repair kits to make sure that my gear gets repaired if I do die a lot out in the world. We also have my buff drink. I have any potions that I require, lock picks, any siege when I PVP, soul gems and any poisons I need to use. So that is generally what I keep in my bags on a normal basis. And that is pretty much, I think, going to cover it, everyone. We have what we uh, have in our bags. We've gone over what crafting materials we need to save. And we quickly touched on saving gear, only saving the necessities as well as gear for research during our leveling process. So hopefully this video helped you guys out. I know that managing your inventory without ESO Plus as a new player is a huge pain point for a lot of people. So I really hope that this guide went over specifically what you should be saving at, to optimize your inventory space in the best way. So if this video helped you out i'd appreciate if you left a like on it if you have any questions feel free to leave a comment below and for more great eso content and guides please be sure to hit that sub button as well as hit the bell to keep notifications on so thank you all so much for stopping by today i very much appreciate it as always i'm dots gaming and i'll see you all in the next video